Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Life Science Learning and Career. Today our topic is Good Automated Manufacturing Practice GAM5. So before uh, introducing the slides and presentation, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is R.K. Singh and I have been working in Life Science industry for a few couple of years. So I have experience in quality control, quality assurance, compliance as well as in auditing. So let's get started. So today our main topic is what is GAM5. So before GAM5, so it was like when it was introduced into the market, it was called GAM. What is mean by GAM? GAM stands for Good Automated Manufacturing Practice. And it was introduced in the year of in 1991 by the pharmaceutical experts in the United Kingdom. So they come up with an idea. Uh, they found that in the market, in the pharmaceutical industry market, they found that there should be some gap and uh, between uh, the regulatory bodies and the manufacturing companies. So they have come up with the GAMP idea in order to fulfill the expectation of the European regulatory agencies as well as the need of the what actually need uh, of the pharmaceutical industry. So that's what it is written as GAMP was founded in 1991 by pharmaceutical industry proportion in the UK with the aim of addressing the need of the industry basically to improve the changing expectation of the regulatory agency as I mentioned in order to meet the expectations of the European regulatory agency and what actually the pharmaceutical industry will needed and uh, how the validation should be performed on the computer systems. So uh, in uh, all the three expectations uh, will come up with an idea called GAM. That's what it is, it is written as. It mainly wanted to provide understanding on how pharmaceutical companies should validate their computer system. That's what it is written in this <coughs> topic. So in the previous slide, we seen about GAM. So this slide, we are going to talk about what is mean by GAM5. GAM5 is nothing but the uh, latest version of GAM which we are using now. Uh, that, that's what it is written as GAM5 or the version 5th of GAM. The current version of GAM which we are using now that is called GAM5 and it was introduced in the year of February 2008 by ISPE, International Society for Pharmaceutical Engineering. Please keep remember this line. It was introduced by ISP. If you go for any, any kind of interview, definitely people will ask who introduced the GAM5 and uh, uh, I mean uh, which year it was introduced. So please remember that it was introduced in the year 2008 by ISP, International Society for Pharmaceutical Engineering. So um, what is uh, actually the GAM5 key concepts are? So the first uh, point is product and process understanding, how the product and process we need to understanding that they have mentioned in the GAM5, life cycle approach within a quality management system QMS, scalable life cycle activities, science based quality risk management and leveraging supplier involvement. So these are the five important uh, concept of GAM5. So I am not going to uh, talk about each and every point now because it is a huge topic. I am going to cover in the, uh, in the next upcoming videos about these five topics. So please keep remember uh, in the interview point of view, people will ask what are the five key concepts or of GAM5. So please keep remember these five points. So I will uh, definitely going to talk about this five uh, point elaborately in the upcoming videos. So as of now, just keep remember what are the key uh, concepts of GAM5. So in this slide, we are going to see about the system development life cycle. What are the main four major phases of system development life cycle? First one is concept phase, project phase, operation phase and retirement phase. So uh, these are the four major phases of the system development life cycle. In the next slide, I am going to talk about elaborately about this these four major phases. So please keep remember there are four major phases of system development life cycle. First one is concept phase, project phase, operational phase and the retirement phase. In the previous slide we talked about the STLC four phases will right. So in this slide I am going to talk about elaborately about all the four phases. So if we take a validation approach for any company, any pharmaceutical company, there will be four phases will be there concept phase, project phase, operational phase and the retirement phase. 
so basically the concert phase uh, is the initial phase and it talks about uh, the uh, the business team who is going to implement the new project in our company they talked about the uh, cost of the project and what will be the scope of my project and uh, who are going to uh, implement that project what will be the timeline of my project so this and all comes under in the concept phase correct so the next phase will be the project phase project phase is one of the important phase in the validation approach because in this phase only we are going to implement the new system uh, performing validation for uh, we are going to perform validation of for the system as well as we are going to release the system so this is one of the important phase right in the uh, project phase uh, if you see the project phase there will be another sub four categories will be there planning phase specification phase verification and re release report and releasing phase right so if you see the planning phase uh, it talks about the validation plan initial risk assessment and the supplier assessment so basically um, at initial of the planning of the project i am going to uh, create the validation plan validation plan talks about roles and responsibilities so, I talked about the deliverables, what are we are going to present and how to handle the discrepancy for my project. So this and all comes under in our validation plan and we are going to perform initial risk assessment. Initial risk assessment talks about the, uh, whether uh, my system uh, is an GXP uh, assessment systems or not, in which CAM categorization it will become. So this and all comes under uh, the initial risk assessment documents and the supplier assessment we are going to perform. So after the planning phase, we are go for a specification phase. Specification phase uh, is basically uh, the user, the user who is going to uh, run the chromatography system in the quality control. Let us take some example. If uh, one of the quality control user, uh, they are going to uh, run the chromatography system in their quality control. So they need, ha they having some set of requirements to run the uh, chromatography system. So they will provide the document called URS document, user requirement specification document. Uh, in the specification document, uh, we talk about the, um, we are going to cover the functionality specification, uh, configuration specification and design specification. Based on the uh, requirements and specifications, we are going to create the test cases in the IQOQPQ document. And we are going to verify all the requirements and specifications so, so that's and all that comes under in our verification phases we need to verify the requirements and specifications in the verification phases once the verification phases will complete we are going for a reporting and releasing phase in that reporting and releasing phase we are talking about traceability matrix traceability matrix is one of the important document in computer system validation please uh, keep remember uh, because traceability matrix is the only uh, document or is an, just, is, is an only evidence which states that my all my requirements and specifications are covered or not, correct? So we are having the lot of bunch of documents and we don't know that uh, whether my all the requirements, user requirements and my uh, specifications are covered or not. So traceability matrix is the only document which uh, uh, gives the clarity that I have covered all my user requirements and specifications in the IQQPQ protocol documents. So uh, in CSU point of view traceability matrix is one of the important document, right? So after uh, tracing all the uh, re requirements and specifications, uh, I'm next I'm going for a validation summary report. In validation summary report, I will uh, briefly uh, I write about my uh, deliverables when I have completed, whether I have faced any discrepancies. If I faced any discrepancies, I am going to write uh, about the discrepancy in the validation summary report. Uh, in final conclusion, I, am, uh, uh, I will write that my system uh, uh, validation was completed and it will go for a live environmental, right? So I am going to, after that, I am going to release the system. So this comes under the validation report. So after releasing the system in the GMP environmental, uh, and there will be some other factors also there. Based on the criticality of the system, uh, we need to perform a few operations that I am going to cover in the operational phases, right? So in the operational phase, uh, there will be uh, so many things we need to cover like security management. So let us take, a, a, I have implemented a new chromatography system like Empower. I have implemented Empower in my company and I am going to uh, uh, releasing the system. So after releasing the system, based on the criticality of the system, based on the criticality of my Empower system, I am going to uh, perform the audit trail review, user management review frequently based on the criticality 
uh, there will be timelines will be there for each every three month or each every six month or yearly basics i need to perform the user management review audit trial review frequently i am going i have to take the backup i mean, i need to backup and the restorations i need to perform i need to perform the disaster recovery based on the company sops right so this are comes under in our optional phase operational phase also talks about if i using the system for a long time and suddenly some day my system uh, i mean uh, having some incident or deviation uh, then i have to go for a revalidation right so it talks about all these things in the operational phases that's what this written security management talks about the security policy or restriction policy to the user they having some uh, limited privileges to access the system based on, on the roles uh, security management will be there incident or problem management backup and restoration disaster recovery everything will comes under in the operational phases so op after the operational phases my system is to go for an retirement phase right so retirement phase uh, is nothing but talks about the data retention migration or destruction and the management of this process so this and all comes under the retirement phases so next i am going to talk about the gamfi categorization so basically uh, if you see interview point of view people will ask what is my gamfi and uh, what are the different categories of the gamfi so if they talk, if they ask this question what are the different categories of the gamfi you need to clearly uh, mention everything um, uh, you need to clearly tell uh, about each a categorization with an example so i am going to talk about uh, gamfi categorization in this slide so gamfi categorization consists of uh, not uh, five categorization it's uh, consists of only four categorization because uh, category 2 was removed so i am going to talk about this in the next slide so if you see the category 1 category 1 is talks about the infrastructure software like infrastructure software is nothing but our os uh, like our uh, um, os will be there right database engines middleware programming languages so this and all comes under infrastructure software like our uh, um, uh, antivirus so this and all comes under in our infrastructure softwares category 1 then category 2 uh, i am going to talk about in the next slide why it was removed in gam5 so next uh, was category 3 category 3 is nothing but non configured software which is also called the cards commercial off the shelf software uh, which is also called as ready made software which is available in the market just we need to buy from the uh, vendor and we, we need to just uh, um, implement in our company perform the csv for the system we, uh, then you have to use the system so there will be no configuration will be there so category 3 uh, we can also call it the laboratory softwares right few of the laboratory software which is ready made software like our chromoly and empower uh, so this and all comes under category 3 software which is non configured software cards commercial of the sell software which is readily available in the market just we need to uh, buy from the vendor and we need to implement in the company and we need to use it so that is called the gam category 3 category 4 is an configured software like we are implementing the limbs in uh, limb systems like laboratory information management system data dash system uh, plcs scadas uh, this and all comes under uh, configured softwares right so we need to Uh, based on the requirements uh, we are uh, configuring the softwares oh, right so that is uh, called the configure softwares category 5 is nothing but bespoke software or an it is a custom software based on the company requirement we are uh, developing a new software and we are going to use that software right so that's what it is written as internally or externally develop it applications uh, most of the uh, this uh, custom applications we are implementing uh, uh, in our company for a specific business purpose right so our it team uh, they will develop our external uh, it teams or it companies they will develop uh, the new software based on your requirement business requirements as well as your user requirements they are going to develop a new software and they are implement in our company so that is uh, comes under the category 5 custom applications or custom softwares or bespoke softwares right internal external develop it application custom frames spreadsheet with macros so these are the gam5 categorization if uh, in interview point of view if uh, any interviewer or any 
person uh, if you ask about the gam categorization you need to elaborate about all this uh, gam categorization which is some example so in this slide i'm going to talk about the difference between gam4 and gam5 so before gam5 uh, there uh, there will be gam4 will be there right so like if you see the uh, gam categorization uh, between the difference between the gam4 and gam5 so categorization will be five categorization will be there in gam4 but in gam5 there will be four categorization only so if you see the gam4 uh, in category 1 they call it as operating system but in gam5 we call it as infrastructure software right so if you see category 2 uh, there will be firmware will be there but uh, in category 5 gam category 5 the firmware was removed and it was merged with any one of the categorization you can um, because uh, in gam5 uh, the firmware was removed and uh, uh, it was merged with any one of our uh, categorization so in gam category uh, 3 category 3 talks about the standard software but in gam category uh, gam category 4 we call it as standard software but in gam 5 we call it as a non configured products so there will be uh, no major difference we call it as standard software here and we call it as here non configured products category 4 configured software it is also configured products not software here it is we call it as configured products in category 4 we call it as custom software here we call it as custom application so this is the difference between gam category and gam uh, category 4 and 5 in category 4 we have firmware but in category 5 the firmware was removed and it was merged with any one of the categories right we can you can you can merge any with any one of the categories in gam 5 in the next section we are going to see the data integrity alcoa plus so thank you so much for watching this video if you like our content kindly subscribe our channel please share with your friends and family members and if any one of our freshers who are interested in computer system validation on pharmaceutical job please go through our videos kindly subscribe so that you will get some notification so you can learn about the computer system validation and definitely one day based on this knowledge which i am going to share with you you will definitely going to get job in upcoming videos uh, or in upcoming videos i am going to uh, talk about the different job roles in uh, pharmaceutical industry and i will post some uh, job whether it is available in market i am going to post in our video so that it will be very useful for you not only for the experienced person i am also going to post the job uh, in market uh, for freshers as well as experienced person so kindly subscribe our channel if you like our content please do uh, uh, thumbs up like and kindly share with your friends and family members thank you so much i really appreciate your time